Hey everybody, one thing we've noticed in questions and comments that we've seen is there's a bit of a misunderstanding surrounding the NIJ standards. Whether people get different levels mixed up or they just have a misunderstanding of how to interpret um, the stopping capabilities of each level in the NIJ standards. As the NIJ standards are used industry-wide to describe the stopping capabilities of different armor, we thought it'd be worth our time to do a quick video and just provide a little clarity on the standards. Um, how to interpret them, the different capabilities of each level within the standards. Really, we just want to provide some more information so that when you're out there comparing body armor and looking around, you know what you're looking at and decide what's best for you. So to start off, the National Institute of Justice, or NIJ, uh, standards establish minimum performance requirements uh, and test methods for the ballistic performance of body armor. So really, it describes, outlines um, what the body armor should be able to stop to meet a certain requirement. And I just standards break it into five types by level of ballistic performance. As the ballistic performance increases, the level will increase as well. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, they do throw an A in there on a couple of them, make it a little more confusing, but really it's pretty straightforward. So we're starting at the bottom and making our way up in terms of ballistic performance, we have level two A, level two, level three A, level three, and level four. So those are your five types by um, ballistic performance level. So I'm not gonna talk as much about level 2A or level 2 today. Really those are, their handgun rated armors uh, that fall below the performance of level 3A. You just don't see them as much in the market with the advancement in you know, technology on aramid fibers and other materials. Uh, usually companies just go straight to 3A and most consumers will as well. Uh, most customers, you just jump right to 3A rather than go with your, your 2A or level two. Uh, so we're gonna start right there with level 3A and uh, make our way on up through the standards. So the NIJ standards read the following for level three. I'm gonna read this directly from the standards themselves to outline the minimum performance requirement for that level. So level 3A says, it should be tested with a 357 SIG FMJ flat nose bullet with a specified mass of 125 grain and a velocity of 1,470 feet per second and with a 44 Magnum semi-jacketed hollow point with a specified mass of 240 grains and a velocity of 1,430 feet per second. So really your level 3A armor is your pistol rated armor. It's gonna stop nine mil, 357 all the way up through your, your 44 max. The other thing to, to think about here that uh, talks more about in the standards in another section is it doesn't only have to stop the round, but also you can't have too much back face deformation when, it, when it's tested. So what that is really when, a, when they test these arm, body armor types, they place it up against a, a clay panel, a clay box. They then shoot the armor uh, and then they pull off the armor and they see the indentation in the clay. That's your back face deformation. They measure the depth of that. It can be up to 44 millimeters. If it's more than 44 millimeters, you know it doesn't pass the standards. So really what that is designed behind is if it's more than 44 millimeters, it's going to cause you internal bleeding and other kind of issues. So although it stops the round, it's still not going to protect you sufficiently as it needs to. So all body armor types, not just level 3A, but all levels have to pass the back face deformation test as well. The other piece of it is, is they're all shot with six rounds. So it's not just one shot, but really six shots um, of each of those different bullet types and, and weight and mass on those bullets. So each will be tested with six shots on each level. So jumping into level three, level three in the standards is as follows. It should be tested with a 7.62 FMJ steel jacketed bullet, it's the military M80, with a specified mass of 147 grain and a velocity of 2,780 feet per second. One thing to keep in mind is this is a minimum, this is the minimum performance requirement for level three. Uh, this is one thing that sometimes gets mixed up. So you could have a armor type that stops all of your, your three A's, your nine mil, your 357, your uh, 44 mag, maybe even stops a 5.56 or a 7.62 round shot at 2,500 feet per second, a little less than the standards. But once you shoot a 7.62 um, at 2,780 feet per second, it'll penetrate the plate. If that's the case, then that armor would still be level 3A and not 3, because it's a minimum performance requirement. It has to meet at least that minimum requirement. It can exceed those, but if it doesn't meet that minimum standard, then it's gonna have to be classified in the standard below as long as it meets all those requirements. 
in reading that, they don't really discuss, there's a, it's a lot of gray areas. They don't discuss, for, for example, 556 isn't even mentioned in the standards. A big question on level three that comes up often is, what about the M855 green tip? So the, the standards say that it'll stop 762 FMJ, uh, so it doesn't stop AP rounds. The, the green tip is not an AP round per se, but it does have a partial steel core. Um, it's actually a common enough one that the NIJ came out and stated that green tip due to the spark partial steel core falls outside of level three standards. So in essence, not all level three armor will stop or has to stop green tip in order to be labeled as level three. It does fall outside the standards. This comes up a lot more with your, uh, your poly plates. They are more susceptible to be penetrated by the M855. Um, for example, our level three steel plates do stop the M855. We've actually done another video on that that you can go check out to see that. Um, but that, that's just one of those gray areas that comes up in the standards. Jumping on to the next level, level four. Level four is really your AP round um, stopping capabilities. So the standards read as follows. Tested with a 30 caliber armor piercing bullet it's the M2 AP military round with a specified mass of 166 grain and a velocity of 2,880 feet per second. So you can see here that there's a, there's a huge gap between level three and level four. Level four has to be able to stop AP rounds, whereas level three does not. So this is, and as I said before, there's, this is a minimum performance requirement. Um, so if it doesn't stop an AP round, it can't be labeled as level four if it can't stop that 30 caliber. So it doesn't matter, if it, even if it stops, you know, your plate could stop a, a 30 out 6 7mm, 45-70, 6.5 Creedmoor. It can stop all those, but once you shoot it with that 30 caliber AP round, if it's not able to stop that, then it's still going to be a level 3 plate because it does not meet the minimum requirement for level 4. There's obviously a, a big difference between a, uh, you know, a 7.62 round traveling at 2,780 feet per second and an AP round, a 30 caliber AP round traveling 2,880 feet per second. And we even get, uh, there, there's a lot of misunderstanding on that point in the standards. Uh, we get a lot of, you know, questions and comments on that specifically. So our level three plate will stop 30-06 rounds. Um, depending on velocity, it'll stop, you know, a large variety of, of high caliber, of high caliber rounds. We even get some online warriors telling us that we're false advertising, that we're misleading customers, that we're uh, you know, scamming people because level three can't stop 30-06. Um, but obviously those people just either haven't read the standards or they don't quite understand the standards because um, that's not true. Our, our level three plate will stop a 30-06 round, FMJ, but it will not stop a 30-06 AP round. And if it won't stop the 30-06 AP round, it can't be level four, so therefore it has to be level three as long as it meets all those other requirements, which it does. That, that's one thing just always to keep in mind, um, that it, it's a minimum performance requirement, it has to meet that minimum performance requirement. A plate can always perform above and beyond the standards um, for any given level, but if it doesn't meet the minimum performance requirements of the level above, then it's always gonna be in that that's lower level. Uh, that's how they read. Now, one one level of armor that is super popular, um, we have a version of it as well, is the level three plus armor. So level three plus does not actually fall within the NJ standards. It is not, it's not written in the NJ standards, it's not covered in there. The uh, level three plus really came about due to that large gap between level three and th level four. Um, as we said, there's a lot of rounds between an M80 ball round and your uh, M2 AP round. Um, what about, like we said earlier, your, your M855 green tip? What about, you know, your higher velocity, um, larger caliber rounds, like a 6.5 or a 7 millimeter, 300 Win Mag. What about some of these other rounds? Where do they fall on the spectrum? Because they're not AP rounds, but they're also shooting well over 27, 2780 feet per second oftentimes. And same with like M855, as we already talked about, it's got the partial steel core. So really level three plus came to be to fill that gap. So companies, um, came up with level three plus, really to describe a plate that exceeds level three standards, but doesn't meet level four standards. Um, one of the big reasons it kind of really came about was due to the M855 round. As stated, not all level three will stop M855, and it doesn't have to to be level three. So especially with poly plates, if it stops your M855, it's usually going to be leveled up, labeled level three plus. 
That being said, there is no set standard for level three plus. Due to it not being in the NIJ standards, there is no set minimum performance requirement for level three plus. Every company will have its own measurement and metric to measure their level three plus. It's gonna be, as I said, in between level three and level four, um, exceeding those level three standards but not meeting level four. But really, each individual company's level three plus plate is going to perform better than others or not as high as others on the ballistic performance. Because there is no set standard, each company decides that on their own. So when you're going out researching level three plus, just pay attention to that. Pay attention to what the company says about their level three plus plate. Um, because it's gonna vary from company to company entirely. Hopefully this provides some clarity on the NIJ standards. We want you to be able to make educated decisions and really choose the best armor that suits your needs. Uh, feel free to reach out to us with any other questions. I uh, would love to answer them.